Welcome to your go-to podcast for the pool and spa industry. My name is Tyler Rasmussen. And my name is Greg Viafania. And this is the Pool Chasers Podcast. Welcome to the Pool Chasers Podcast. This is episode 14. Let's jump right into it. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Kim. Uh, really excited about this episode. Um, just so you all know, Kim has been in our lives now for about three years. Uh, we met through a company she works for called Broadly. And Broadly is pretty amazing. They really helped us communicate with our customers through strategic emails, texts, and different things like that um, after each job and uh, for the weekly service we provide to our customers. Um, it really helped us out, figure out what we needed um, in terms of feedback from our customers and different things like that. So they really helped us in the beginning stages of Brothers Pool Service really get you know the feedback that we needed um, to correct different things. So with all that being said, thank you so much for being with us. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, yeah. let's uh, get this started. Uh, you want to introduce yourself to our listeners and what sure. you do exactly? Yeah. So my name is Kim Olson. And like Greg mentioned, I've had the privilege of knowing these brothers for a few years now. And I've actually been with Broadly since the beginning. So it's uh, been, a, gosh, a little bit over four years now. And um, I am a marketing consultant and sales rep for the company and just helping small businesses across the nation grow every day. Happy to happy to be there and happy to be here. Thank you. Well, we need to warn these people what they're in for because I remember our first experience with you and it was pretty wild. So we met at, <laughs> I think, the Western Pool and Spa Show in Long Beach. That's right. And um, you Can kinda... you abbreviate it for us? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was kind of cool earlier how you said WPPN, whatever you called it. WPSS. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, but what, how did I, you say it? That's like lingo, guys. I mean, you I know, should what know you that. Call it? The WPSS. WPSS. Mm. I'm going to start saying that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you invited us to dinner with some other people and then some other colleagues at work for Broadly. And I remember, I think you guys had a car or rented a car and got in the car and just probably about, you know, 15 minutes into the car ride, you just start bumping Miley Cyrus super loud <laughs> and you're singing the windows down and we're just like, what is going on? And you here? guys are like, this is the coolest chick I've ever met. <laughs> I thought it was actually pretty cool. I was it like, was. all right, <laughs> all right. Hey, definitely I, broke the ice. I like to treat my customers as friends. And so that was a quick way for us to let our hair down, relax, have fun together. So I hope I etched a special memory <laughs> in your mind. People listening Definitely. to this can be like, I know exactly who that is. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely never listen to Miley Cyrus the same. I know. I think I was looking for that song afterwards because it was like stuck in my head. I'm like, what the hell is the name of that song? Is it weird if I I think I took a that? picture of it like a year later or something when it came on the radio. So, yeah. No, it's my jam. I love that song. <laughs> Do you remember what song it is? It's, um, I, I actually don't remember what it's called, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'll have to think of it, and maybe at the end we can surprise we can them with a it. little one-liner or something. Go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, anyway, let's jump into just kind of uh, your background and, you know, whatever you can share in your uh, personal life, you know, your, share with us your family and uh, anything else you'd like to share. Sure. So, um, well, I've been in sales, uh, gosh, coming on 15 years. Um, I am born and raised in California, so grew up in Pasadena and went to college down in San Diego at Point Loma Nazarene University. And uh, right out of college, um, I got into the mortgage industry and worked in that until it all blew up. And then I moved into medical devices, which was very cool really enjoyed that time. Um, and then obviously I was introduced to Broadly and have been there since. So I definitely have a passion for sales. That's my wiring, kind of what I've found. My skill set um, has led me to be successful at. Um, but in terms of actually Broadly, you know, I have a really huge passion for small business. And so I feel like being at Broadly has allowed me to not only use my skill set with sales, but really the part that I love most about this job is just the education that comes along on, you know, what Broadly does and why it's important. Owning a small business is, you know, no small feat. It's huge. And we have a lot of empathy for small business owners. Um, 
And, you know, the, the decisions they make every day, they're inundated with different options of how to grow your business and, oh, I'm going to promise you this. And so it's really neat to have, you know, a solution, if you will, for small businesses that are looking to grow and, you know, looking to take their business to the next level. Um, so that's a little bit just about my professional experience. And then personal, um, we live in Orange County. So Broadly is headquartered out of Oakland, but we have a Newport Beach office as well. So I work out of that office and um, along with about a team of 15 other people, uh, married uh, to Dusty for 14 years. We actually just celebrated our anniversary yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. Oh, nice. Congratulations. Um, thank you. And then we have three killer rock star kiddos. So Who Dylan's... also love to dance to Miley Cyrus. Yeah. They're quite the dancers. <laughs> Um, so Dylan's nine and Connor is seven and Mackenzie's four. So I, uh, I love being a mom and kind of balancing the, the work life and mommyhood life is sometimes challenging, but I love it. Nice. Thank yeah. you for sharing that with us. I know we were just talking that, um, we see all your posts on Instagram and you guys are just having a hell of a time. It seems like all the time. So it's really cool that you got that really, uh, good, you know, work life balance. Yeah, it's important. I mean, the reality is, and I know you guys have young families too. It's, you know, work is just a part of life, but yeah. the most important is your family and creating memories. And we're pretty good at that. We like to have fun. What do you guys do for fun? Do they all play sports or what do yeah, you Yeah, this has actually been a really fun season. I was telling Tyler earlier, you know, the boys are starting to really get into competitive sports. And so, um, I don't want to toot my own horn, but being an athlete, I, <laughs> I like absolutely love it. It is so fun to watch your kids like fall in love with, you know, sports and be competitive. So that takes a lot of our time, but it's, it's fun. Um, and in the summer, you know, a lot of beach days, um, what's the closest beach for you guys? Uh, we're right sort of in between, um, like Laguna beach and like Dana point area. So we usually head down to a beach called Doheny. It's perfect. Like beginner surfer waves for the kids and they have like a state park so you can camp there and stuff. So it's awesome. Laguna is awesome. We vacationed there last year. I remember uh, seeing time, your pictures. Yeah. Yeah. It was so gorgeous. much fun, but I remember it being a little less touristy. There was an insane amount of people there. And I was like, oh, man, like, this is awesome. But I'm enjoying this with, like, thousands of other <laughs> yeah. people here. You know what I mean? Um, but tons of fun. That's cool that that's so close to you guys. Beach is always a good time. So did you graduate college? I did. Yeah? Yeah. Four years? Mm-hmm. Nice. What did yeah. you get? What degree your... in communication. Communication? Mm -hmm. mm. I was like, oh, that's a degree where I could, like, really just do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. So, um, but you were born and raised in Pasadena. I was. Yeah. My parents still live there. Man. I love the Pasadena flea market. Oh, at the Rose Bowl. At the Rose Bowl. It's legit. Yeah. It's like one of the best. That was the first event that I started selling my face mask at a long time ago. Really? Uh, I remember I was super nervous getting into that was like take these the craziest thing ever. It was like getting out of Dodger stadium after yeah. a playoff oh, totally. game or something. Well, because the Rose Bowl's like down in, like there's only like two ways. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's pretty nuts too. You'd think that you're getting a deal when you go to that show for stuff, but it's like, paint, like, Oh, how much is this painting? They're like, Oh, it's, you know, 4,500 bucks. I'm like, no. What, and uh, there's what? like some people that have booths that are selling like vintage stuff. Like it's not like, I actually think it kind of draws in like a higher end crowd sometimes. Like, because they do one down in Costa Mesa, like where the fairgrounds are by our house. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's a totally different experience than the one in Pasadena. Oh, yeah. That one is super legit. A lot of high rollers. But I mean, getting into the Rose Bowl, all those houses, like right before you get in, are just dude, some of the most beautiful houses Amazing, I've ever seen. Amazing, yeah. They're the one area like above the Rose Bowl is called Linda Vista. Mm -hmm. And it is so gorgeous. I mean, just like kind of more sprawling like states. Really nice. Nice. We so, used to go to the Orange County Fair all the time. Oh, yeah, you know, that's a good one. Cool. Yeah. They have the best uh, churros there. The churros are the best. <laughs> Can't beat they, the fair churro. Yeah, I was going to say fair they, food is like just so good. Well, they, beat, like, they beat Disneyland's Lance churros, and I know everybody's like loves Disneyland's Lance churros. Yeah. And they're good, but the Orange County Fair churros, that's the best. On point. Mm hmm. The Chopper has some like, churro bites. I know, man. What's up with that? <laughs> Where's our churros? That's our plug for the Orange County Fair. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm here for today. <laughs> hey, man, if I can get a churro cart in here, I'd be done. <laughs> Might see one in here. 
<laughs> oh, that's awesome. So do you um, do you have any family or friends back in California that own their own businesses? Yeah. So um, I grew up, my dad's a real estate agent. He um, has his own brokerage. So I definitely feel like I kind of grew up around small business, you know, um, my dad owned his own company he didn't, he didn't work for anyone else. And so it was kind of that idea of feast or famine, if you will, sometimes, and, and constantly watching him try different things. And what's really neat about watching him and sort of relating it to what I'm doing now at Broadly is how my dad got new customers was strictly through word of mouth. You know, my dad did a great job making the sales experience or selling someone's home great. And then they would go tell their friends and family. And my dad's been a real estate agent in the Pasadena area for over 30 years. And ultimately, um, you know, that has always been the best, most organic way to grow your business. You do good work and other people sing your praises. Um, what's been interesting in the last, I would say, five years, but especially the last two is that has all sort of changed in the idea of, um, you know, we don't talk to each other as much as we used to. We don't go around to our neighbors or friends and family and say like, oh, I used these guys to clean my pool or I have this dentist and he or she is great. The idea of word of mouth, true word of mouth face to face has just become so slow. And so then it's sort of all about like, well, where should this word of mouth live? And so what we know and what I hope that we're going to really get into today is, um, you know, it needs to live online because that's where everybody is in 2018. The modern consumer of 2018 starts their search for anything on Google or, you know, Yahoo or any of those search engines. And they're relying on these reviews or this word of mouth. Um, so it's cool to kind of see growing up, you know, with that and with the value of word of mouth for a small business. And then sort of knowing the importance of like how that needs to live, you know, running a business in, in these modern times. Yeah, things have definitely changed. I think there's so many more entrepreneurs and service-based businesses and things like that now to where you need some type of system like the internet to kind of vet different companies because it's getting much harder. I mean, how many pool service companies were around maybe 10 years ago compared to now? You know what I mean? So it's it's a lot more difficult. So we definitely rely on all these platforms like Google and Yelp and um, things like that to just kind of see what kind of experience other people have had with these uh, other companies. That's right. And, you know, one thing I'll say, and this isn't meant as a put down or a dig, but, you know, like our parents didn't have the same access to the technology. And so it's so much more of a learning curve for them versus us or the younger generations um, below us. It's just part of their everyday thing. They're on the social media sites. They I mean, my dad still types with his one finger. I mean, that's just what a disconnect it is. So I really value my position at Broadly because there are still business owners that are not of the digital age and they have to be taught and it's an education. But if it's something that they're willing to learn or they want to grow their business in that way, it's such a privilege for me to be able to teach it to them. Um, and that's what's been so cool. You know, I hope you guys know I'm one of your biggest cheerleaders and it's been so neat to watch you from the sideline to see how much you guys have taken advantage of the tools out there. And I know when you started Brothers, like you didn't know all about it, but you learned and you read about it and you did your research and your business has grown as a result of it. And so if business owners can take the time and learn the tools, um, you know, there's so much potential for growth out there in, in an environment, like you said, Greg, that just has so much more competition than there used to be. Yeah, definitely. And we really appreciate that. I mean, you guys have been a lot of help. Yeah. So, I mean, we were just at the WPSS, if you want to call it, <laughs> AKA <laughs> Western Pool and Spa Show. Um, so we actually saw your presentation there and you killed it. So, oh, you know, we thought that was one, hands down, you know, one of the best we've ever seen at that show for sure. Um, it just, it just brings a whole another level to that show. I think than has been there before and, you know, he's, I've done it the last couple of years. So, you know, how, how is that for you? You know, what did you think about it? Yeah, it's a great opportunity. Um, like you said, I mean, all the classes that you guys have opportunities to go to, at least when I've looked at, you know, sort of the program in years past, you know, a lot of it is just absolutely 
pool related in terms of the industry. So whether it's like how to do a new, you know, service or a new product that's coming out. Um, and there's in the past been little content around like the business side of how to run a business or how to actually grow or what is marketing look like for this industry. So, um, I think this is our second year in a row that we've gotten to do the talk and it's mm -hmm. crazy how many people come, um, because they're hungry, they want to grow and they want to learn access to the tools. I think the title of our talk is actually, um, how to stand out online and be a five-star business. And so I think automatically when you read that, it just, something clicks like in your mind as a business owner, you're like, yeah, I want to learn more about that. So it's been an awesome opportunity that the show's given broadly. And I actually think next year we're looking to do the show on both days versus just the one because of the turnout that we've had. I was going to say the first year you guys did it, you had a crazy turnout. I mean, there's a bunch of people standing up right. in the back and then you went to the biggest room and that was a, there was a ton of people in there as well. So you guys are definitely doing it and it's crazy to see that that is a thing you know what I mean? People just read that uh, right. title and they're like, I need to go. I need to go check that out because that definitely, um, you know, talks to me and I need to learn more about lean, learn more about that. Yeah, absolutely. And the reality is, again, this is where it comes into like the part of the job that I really love, which is just like informing business owners, you know, of some of the tools out there that don't even cost a dime, you know, that literally something as easy as claiming your Google listing can help you start showing up. And so there's so many aspects of showing up online that business owners aren't aware of in terms of what they can do that, that won't even make a dent in their marketing budget. And that's the part that I really love is just being able to share that information with people and, and make them or hope to get them to understand the importance of what we're talking about here. And we thought that presentation was so good that, you know, hopefully we're just going to pretty much do the presentation over, you know, through this podcast and just ask you some of the same questions that awesome. were there that day. Um, just because we feel like there's a ton of people that obviously weren't there. People listen to this all over the country and we feel like they would get a lot out of talking about this. So I know <clears throat> me and you, Kim, were just talking about how um, I know a lot more things now. So just listening to your presentation in Long Beach was really refreshing because um, it really reminded me of the things that I need to, you know, constantly do. And sometimes you forget because now the marketing side of it is a part of your business. It's not like maybe your parents or somebody else's parents back in the day where you just, you know, did the job, collected the money and word of mouth was gold. Now, this is a, a big part of our business now where we have to take photos, take video. We have to share them on social platforms. We have to put them on Yelp. We have to make sure that photos are in a certain place. Um, you have to get photos on your website. There's so many things that you have to do now. It's not, it's not that simple. You have to wear all these different hats. So it was really cool to kind of just get that refresher on uh, what we need to be paying attention to. So I think the listeners are really going to get a lot of that. So, you know, first off, where do you think that people are looking for professional services these days? Yeah, sure. And um, before I even answer that, I'll preface it that because I know your listenership is obviously mostly pool related, what we like to call professional services or even home services, you know, where literally you are going into people's homes. Like I can't stress enough the importance of having a good reputation online because this is truly where people are learning to trust you. Like, can they let you into their homes? And without a referral or a word of mouth, like how they're going to do that is by starting on these search engines and looking for this content in the form of reviews. So what we like to say is about 80% of all consumers will start their search on a search engine like Google um, for anything. Like I said, whether that be a dentist for their kids or where they're going to send their kids to preschool, they need a um, pool repair company. I mean, whatever that business need is, the modern consumer of 2018 doesn't have to be tech savvy to do that search anymore. You know, our smartphones live in our back pocket and that is where they can truly just type in their business need, their service area, press search, and they have all that information at their fingertips. And, um, you know, it's such a high percentage of people that are doing that kind of search. Yeah. I think you made a good point with, um, you know, 
it's different than when you go to Yelp, I think, than to look for a restaurant, you know, or you look for, you go to Google to find some place to go eat or whatever. You, you don't have the same, you don't look at it the same way as somebody coming to your house. So Absolutely. You know, the, the trust, the trust that you need to have online, the, those reviews that, that just, you know, gives you, I don't know the right word. Well, I can fill it in for you. <clears throat> at Broadly, we call it social proof. Yeah. So that social proof is that you're as good as you say you are because all these other people are saying it too. Right. And what's wild is that 88% of us will read a review and trust it as much as a word of mouth referral. So if we break that down, what that means is Literally, Stacy Johnson from Scottsdale, Arizona could be like, the brothers are amazing. They came, they cleaned my pool. I trust them. They're awesome. And I would trust that review as much as like if my own mother told me that. And so that just makes the power of these online reviews that much more validating because we trust them like they came from a family member versus mm-hmm. a complete stranger. There's a different level of trust to you for sure when you're allowing somebody to come into your backyard, I mean, to your house and mm-hmm. to your, you know, like I was telling you earlier up in Desert Mountain, we have like, and it kind of grew, blew Greg's mind the first time we went up there. Like we just, they just gave us the garage door code and let us walk through their house to get to the backyard. Remember we, remember we went up there before? Yeah, it seemed like <laughs> a setup, <laughs> right? You're like, what's yeah. behind this garage <laughs> Exactly. Door. So like, you know, they, they, that's how I do. And I worked for the window cleaning company and other things up in those areas. They just give you the garage door code. They have cameras all in their house and you just trust you to walk right. in there Like when they're not even home. They're halfway across the world or a country, you know, that's that's a crazy level of trust they have to have. And that online validation just helps you in every way. That'd be a hell of a review. Like these guys did really <laughs> good work, but uh cheesecake is missing out of my refrigerator. <laughs> Give them access through my, uh, my house to get to the spa. All my food's gone. That was really, that was really good. I, thank you. I should have asked. <laughs> um, I think a lot of business owners need to understand too, that it's a constant, it's a constant kind of game where, you can have just two star, three star, four star, whatever it may be. It's a constant, like you have to keep up with it. So don't ever think it's too late. You know what I mean? You just have to, you know, constantly step up your game and do Absolutely. whatever you need to. Um, Cause I think a lot of people are like, Oh, I hate this. I haven't figured it out. Um, I got three stars and it's just, I'm over it. You know what I mean? But you can't think about it like that because I know we've gotten ourselves into situations where it's like, you know what, that, that move might have cost us and we might get some negative feedback on that. But we kind of always talk about it and we're like, you know what? We probably deserve it. And if it goes on there and it brings us to four and a half, four, whatever the case may be, that just means that we have to take that and make ourselves better and build better processes and um, go out there and do a better job next time and get better feedback for the next people. And I think that's the way that you need to really think about it. Not just, oh, we got a negative review. Uh, when, when's it going to stop? It's like, dude, you just, you have to use that. You know, this day and age, you have to use that as fuel to kind of keep yourself and your team in check. And I know we talked a lot about that on uh, Yelp's episode with Sophie, was that it's a really good tool to kind of keep you in line. Because if you do have a reputation online, in order to keep it good, you have to constantly, you know, provide that level of service where you're honest and all those different things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's, let's sort of bring it back to Google because I feel like that is where the majority of consumers start their search. You know, Google's kind of king, right? Um, and the reality is what a lot of business owners aren't aware of is that every single business online can have a Google listing or, or do have a Google listing and it's a completely free service. So you don't have to pay. You can pay. Obviously, you can pay for ad space. You can pay for PPC campaigns. But to have a Google listing is completely free. And this is where you can do things like add your phone number, make sure there's a click um, through to your website. Um, Even something as simple as adding your business hours to your Google listing can boost click-throughs to your website by 42%. This is the type of knowledge that's really important for business owners to have because guess what? Adding your business hours to your Google listing takes you five seconds and it doesn't cost you a dollar. So this is where you can really take ownership of this listing.
seen. And obviously this is where your Google reviews or some of that feedback will live as well. But what Google tells us about their algorithms for who they choose to showcase when someone's doing a Google search is that it's largely driven by those consumer reviews. And so that's where a lot of business owners get stuck of like, well, I don't know how to get, I mean, I don't, what are these stars or how do I get my customers to leave reviews here? And, and we can get into that later. But the most important, I think, part of it is just understanding that if you haven't gone in and claimed your Google listing, added photos, added your business information, I view that as missed business opportunity. Mm -hmm. So what you were just saying there, you know, Greg, where some business owners are just like, man, I'm starting from buying. I've already gotten a couple negative reviews. I just, I want to throw in the hat. I just don't even really want to deal with it. Like you just have to understand, like it's a missed opportunity to grow and to, and to make money for your business, because this is where we know consumers are looking. So if you can take ownership of, you know, something like your Google listing, um, Google provides you so many insights and data. Like if you, once you've gone through the process of claiming your Google listing, um, then they give you back end metrics where you can actually track like your phone calls. Like when are you getting the majority of your phone calls? Are there any trends there? How are people finding your business? Is it from a direct search where they typed in your name or was it from what we call a category or indirect search? You know, having, um, insight into that, those analytics is important um, because it sort of gives you a direction on like what you need to do. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention with the Google listing is Google has now um, given business owners an opportunity to take advantage of messaging from their Google listing. And I think this is huge because not only do consumers not talk to each other anymore, but they don't even want to pick up the phone anymore to call. So straight from your Google listing, you can enable messaging. And this allows potential customers to just say like, hey, are you taking on new clients? Or do you service this part of Arizona? And um, then you're able to give them a quick reply. And that's what it's all about in 2018. People want quick information and they want to be able to do it from their back pocket. I and mean, this is all stuff you can take advantage through your Google listing for free. So it's great information to have. Yeah, definitely. And I, I have some mixed feelings on the messaging. Um, I think it's a really good tool, but I think anything that you start implementing in your business, you have to understand that you have to pay very close attention to it because if these customers are messaging you and you're not paying attention to the notifications, you don't have them turned on or whatever the case may be, that could definitely result in negative feedback and not responding at all. Um, cause you have these features turned on and you're saying that, you know, we, we reply in, you know, 15 minutes, sure. 24 hours, whatever, and you just never do anything. So I definitely think that people have to pay close attention to where they're putting their business, what platforms you're on and figure out the best way for you to kind of stay in the loop with that. I know probably about two years ago, I actually made a checklist that I ran through almost every day. And it was a checklist of looking at the Google Analytics. It was looking at the hours, looking at the Yelp photos. It was looking at the Yelp slideshow. It was really going through every single thing. And it just kind of kept me in check because really, that's the hardest thing is you put yourself in all these places. And it's really difficult because you still run your day to day. And this is a piece of it. But there's so many different things that you know, can go right, can go wrong. Um, and they're just, you might, your phone stops ringing, the uh, email stop coming in, the messaging stops. And you're like, like, what the heck happened? And you might dive back into it. And you're like, this is what it was. I didn't pay my website subscription fee. <laughs> I haven't had a website for four months. I, you know what I mean? Right. So there's like all these things. And I recommend that to anybody. If you haven't figured something out is kind of making, you know, maybe some kind of checklist, basic checklist of what you got going on. I mean, even down to your Facebook and uh, Instagram and things like that. Like, what should you be checking? What kind of analytics should be you looking at? Um, and I love the Google analytics tool cause it shows you an insane amount, a little too much sometimes. Yeah, but, I would um, agree. It's, it's really good. It shows you where, uh, everything's coming from. Um, so what do and you, what, yeah. Okay. And wouldn't you want to, I mean, claiming that business, regardless if you claim it or not, those negative reviews you already got or live there. Right. That's so absolutely right. wouldn't you want to 
be able to claim that and fight for that, like at least fight for the what, what how you're showing online. Because I mean, you're if the, if you got those three negative reviews and you just want to ignore it, like those three negative reviews don't go away. It still so, lives there. <laughs> somebody, mm-hmm. you know, our age demographic, younger, you know, now even up to like the fifties, like are using that so much. Like that's still what they're going to see when they search for you. You know, it's going to be that. So you might as well take advantage of the free stuff and at least get it to where it's running and you can actually, you know, defend yourself a little bit on there. I agree. I think it's you hit it on the head. I mean, it's really about taking ownership of your online reputation. And um, there are there are things that you can do. And again, Greg's right. I mean, you've got to figure out what's going to be important to your business what we know the trends are and, you know, where we know sort of this movement is going towards is the idea of chatting and messaging. But if you're not going to put yourself in a position to be able to reply on time or get, but I think that's the idea of it. It's like, look, you got, you know, we realize small business owners aren't sitting behind a desk all day. Like typically they're out in the field, there's doing things. So now these tools allow you to keep a tight pulse on the business from wherever you are. You know, you get a message through Google that comes through your smartphone as a tech, like as a direct text. And so it allows you to respond and read right from where you are, no matter what you're doing. And so it just gives you a whole new level of engagement with potential customers um, that I think would would really create a return. Um, yeah, and, and if you don't do anything with it, you're just going to lose them anyway. That's so, exactly so. <laughs> right. That's you, you exactly have no chance right. of winning them. Yep, I agree. Yeah. And just so everybody knows, we're talking about taking advantage of some of the free services out there like Google and claiming your business and things like that. Um, As far as claiming your business, you pretty much claim the business and you have to actually have some type of address because Google has to send you that postcard that says, you know, here's the code, plug it in just to verify that you are who you say you are and that this address does belong to you. Um, So that's the way you pretty much get that started. And it is free. Am I correct? You're absolutely correct. Yeah, they'll they'll do what's called the verification process. You get a little postcard. And and again, if it's something where you haven't claimed your Google listing, Google tries to give every single business a Google listing. But a lot of times, like it will be a street view of like a house or because they just try to guess, you know, what the physical location is. They'll try to take like a Google map street picture. So that's really where you want to come in. You want to add those photos. You want to add those business hours you know, put your website. I can't tell you the amount of times I've, you know, come across small businesses that have a Google listing and the information's wrong. I'm like, that's a missed, <laughs> like you just missed a phone call. Like that's a yep. potential customer. And so even just making sure that your information is listed correctly, again, adding business hours and the photos. I mean, if anybody knows this, you guys do, they just add so much of your branding and your credibility in home services. I can't say it enough, like get a picture of, your techs and their gear, like th- that all builds credibility. And so those platforms where you can add photos, take every advan- you know, opportunity to, to get that stuff on there. Yeah, you're totally right. And I think keeping them updated is really important too. And me and Ty were just talking about this where, you know, I need to take time to put some new photos on there because there's a lot of things that we do now that we weren't really doing say three, four or five months ago. And we really need to get those on there because, um, the views on the Google photos are seriously insane. They're actually way crazier than website or anything else. Cause Google actually send you an email notification saying that, Hey, this photo has gotten viewed 5,000 times in 30 days. I'm like, excuse me, (laughs) that photo right <laughs> man i really need to change that up i'm not quite sure you know what i mean but uh you don't want to miss that opportunity to and if you think it it's actually not as difficult i think as people think it is i think you just need to jump on there claim your business and just do the steps that google tells you to do and you know communicate with people like you kim to kind of walk you through it absolutely and also because i know you you were doing that at the trade show and you were handing out business cards and you were like hey if you have questions on kind of how to you know step through this and if you need more information and i always really respected that you guys are walking through people with the basic steps if they haven't really done any of that so that's pretty cool Um, so yeah, I think that is really important in the hours, man, just from us owning a business that is crucial. I mean, we have 4th of July coming up and I did that last week. It's pretty cool that Google actually reminds you, you want to keep that, you want to keep that, um, email up to date because it will remind you like, Hey, are you guys open on independence day? 
If you're not, you better say something because that's terrible if it looks like you're open because these people are excited, especially for 4th of July. Yeah. It's going to be because you're going to be one of the only companies that says that they're open. And it doesn't help that we're number one in our area and it says we're open and the phones are off. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So that is, a, I think, a really good way if your phone's blown up to get probably <laughs> a few bad reviews. And you probably, to be honest, if that happened, I would take full responsibility for that because it's like, you know what? Screwed up. You know, these people were actually pretty excited. They took the time to call us or email us and they're waiting, you know, for some type of response. And there's nothing because we said that we're open. So um, definitely going back to taking ownership. You know, if you do or say something that, you know, isn't accurate, then, you know, that's what you get. That's what those platforms are built for. And I think people need to understand, too, that you're dealing with human beings and if you have negative feedback, say in the beginning or, you know, whatever point in time, that response is key. Like, you know, how are you going to stick up for yourself and how are you going to own up to some of the mistakes you might have made? And I um, think all of that is key, especially going back. And as people like, oh, they had, you know, some negative reviews in the beginning. But you can see that it's really kind of, you know, building some traction now because they're starting to kind of, you know, fix some things in their company. So it's really important. Um, so what would you say, what kind of impacts do uh, five stars have on a business? Yeah, that's a great question because I think, again, it goes back to that whole idea of social proof and credibility. And so some of the data that Google gives us um, in terms of being a five-star business is just like 69% of all clicks um, that happen come from that Google three-pack. So in other words, if someone just searches for pool service in Scottsdale, Arizona, who Google chooses to showcase there, those top three businesses are getting the lion's share of those clicks, you know, because people, when I say people, I mean consumers, you, me, um, we're programmed to literally think like who comes up first, who has the most reviews, they're getting my call. Mm -hmm. And so, um, not only does it matter to sort of strive to come up in those searches, but there's 25% more clicks, um, for five star businesses than businesses that have three stars or less. So it's not only are you coming up, but it's like, what are other people saying about you? You know, and those negative reviews, Again, it's part of owning a small business, but they hurt because those lower star ratings, you're just not earning as much business because your credibility immediately goes down. Okay. So in the time you've spent with Broadly in the pool industry, what what have you seen? What kind of trends have you seen as far as like what, you know, our industry is lacking when they're coming to you and they're saying, I don't know what I'm doing or I think I'm doing everything right and I'm still not getting the calls or the emails. Once you dive into their um, social platforms, website, whatever it may be, what are you finding is uh, the majority of the problem? That's a great question. I would say first and foremost, specifically to this industry is the lack of a website. I mean, most pool companies don't even have a website. And I would say that that's pretty crazy because as you guys know, and you guys have taken such advantage of this, it's such an aesthetic thing. And so having a website where you have full ownership of your branding and you can put pictures of your jobs before and after photos, like that really, really helps create an online presence for yourself. It's your starting ground. So I would say like when we do, you know, these pool shows or we're talking to, to, you know, whether they're builders or repair or service, whatever it is, is you gotta have a website. I mean, that's really your home online. And, um, it's really where you have full ownership of telling your story. And so I would say that's one trend. And so then kind of following alongside that is maybe they do have a website, but it's not mobile friendly. Um, you know, people can't pull it up on their smartphone. It doesn't translate. You know, Google actually dings you if your website is not mobile friendly in terms of SEO and when you're coming up in searches. Um, you know, something that an uncle built 20 years ago and they've just been riding that wave. And I would say like that is one area where you need to invest. You need to really put some marketing dollars towards having, you know, a great website. And again, it doesn't have to be a $10,000 website. Like you can get a great website for an affordable cost that's mobile friendly and allows you to tell your story and get the name out about your business. Um, but then another thing I would say 
and this is really where the broadly solution comes in is just the idea of having some sort of follow-up system to learn about your customer's experience. You know, like you mentioned in the beginning of the podcast, Greg, like the old way of doing business was you shook hands, you got paid and like you went on your merry way. And now, and you know, and you would hope for that word of mouth to follow. And now it's like, we do this work. We, we, you know, we're good at our craft. We're good at our skill. We, we invest in doing a job well done and then we do nothing. And it's like, whoa, like, don't you care to know, like, is your customer happy? Did you miss the boat somewhere? Is there something you could change to better your business? And you won't know until you ask. And so I feel like that's the biggest eye opener for a lot of business owners in the this industry is they're like, I haven't even thought of that. Like, how would I do that? How do I send an email? I don't collect emails. Okay. Well, so did I send it to, and so there's just a huge eye opening education about the importance of having some sort of follow up to gauge your customer experience. I think that is seriously one of the biggest things that we didn't really understand in the beginning until we linked up with you guys was collecting the emails. I mean, we were getting them before, right, Ty? Yeah. Yeah, we were getting them before um, for, you know, QuickBooks and making sure that they got invoices and different things like that. But once we, you know, were trying to get feedback on the type of work that we were doing at um, these people's houses and pools and all their equipment, it was really important to get that feedback. And I don't know if we took that as serious back then, but now it's it's just so crucial. I mean, to the point where we're like, Okay, the email you just gave us, is that one you actually check? I need your main email. <laughs> you know, because I we all have, you know, multiple emails for different things. It's like, no, I need the that one email. You know what I mean? Do you have any issues with spam? Like, and I'm going to send you a follow-up email to make sure that you check the, you know, the spam, you know, inbox or whatever. So it's crazy how how important it is now. And it's really cool, the different features, you know, with text messaging and things like that. Um, so that, you know, you actually can see that, but if you're not collecting emails right now, man, you're really missing the, missing the boat on that because that is, that is crucial. (laughs) It's kind of funny how frustrated we get when we get that, that kickback, you know, Google email that was wrong. Oh, Oh, that has got to be one of our biggest pet peeves where it's like, oh, rejected. This email was not correct. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? (laughs) No, man. We spend so much time trying to get those right emails and we still get them like that. It's like, man, what the heck? And you yeah. have to follow back up with them like, hey, you know the email you text me? Yeah. It's not correct. <laughs> Can I get a good one? Right. Oh, sorry. I forgot the S. That's yeah. No, that's such a good point. I mean, I think that, um, you know, I'll, I'll talk to a lot of business owners and they're like, well, I, I just don't, I don't want to bug my customer. Like, I don't want them to have to give me their email address. And I'm just like, look, it is such a common ask today for an email address, especially if you're invoicing or, or doing things electronically. And if anything, you know, if it's someone that partners with Broadly, I'm always like, just tell them you're sending them a thank you email to yeah. thank them for the business. You know, the whole idea of thanking people for choosing your business is such a lost art. So that's, you know, another benefit that you get with this automated follow-up system is the chance to say thanks for choosing me. Um, And so, yeah, Greg, I I couldn't agree with you more. Like if you're not currently asking your customers for email addresses, please adopt that into part of your process. When you book new business, you know, name, address, phone number, email address. And like Greg said, like take the time to actually verify that it's correct information. This will make you, I mean, this seriously, I don't know, every business owner has a different vision for their business, but if you have an exit plan and you're planning on selling your business one day, having email addresses for your customers will make you that much more profitable. Mm -hmm. So it's just best business practice in 2018, I would agree. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. I was going to say, we've, we've, we've always gotten them from the very beginning, but mostly I think what we adopted from the very beginning and a lot of people don't do in this industry is we've done electronic invoicing from the beginning, which is the reason that we started collecting emails. So when we made the transition to broadly, it wasn't a huge jump for us to get more emails, but like that's, I mean, even alone, if you're still sending paper invoices, you're spending a lot of money on stuff you shouldn't spend and money time. on. And time. And time. Yeah. Like, that, cause that's, I mean, that's the most important thing about those emails is you can invoice, you know, for people in this industry. I know a lot of people still do paper invoices. I still have, friends in this industry that, that do that. And I'm like, man, you're the time it takes you to fold that envelope, put it, fold that paper, put it in the envelope, stamp it. Like I have four that I still do. I, and I hate it. 
like I, if they get their invoices by the 20th, like they're lucky. Cause I can't, I find, they just sit on my desk for like 10, 15 days until I finally find the time to like put them in and send them. Cause like these last four people, like until I bring them from the yeah. printer to your desk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, that's how we started off. And, and, you know, if you're not doing, if you're not getting emails, you're, you're losing out on that. And, you know, as well as all the follow up. So, you know, that's a good point there for invoicing and, you know, being able to actually collect the money that you went out and hardly, you know, earned. Yeah. And I think you have to be really comfortable with being transparent with a customer and saying, hey, this is how I'm going to know how good of a job we did at your property. And I think you really need to get that message across. And we've done really good at that. And it's just like, hey, like, I'm not the one going out there doing the job. I need to make sure that my team is doing what we said we're doing. You know what I mean? So it's really important for us to follow up with them and say, hey, you know, how was your experience with us? Did everything go right? Please give us, you know, some feedback just through this email, letting us know, is there anything that we need to do? Um, You know, and sometimes it's not so good and you got to fix some stuff or it's just, hey, it was the greatest experience ever, blah, 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 blah. Perfect. Well, Not we legitimately, really. you know, when when a customer gives us feedback, <laughs> whatever it is, we, we legitimately love to hear that because if somebody says that that one of our guys is doing something that they don't like, like I I I want that all day long because exactly. that way I can say, hey, well, you know, and I always thank them every time, and I know you do too, Greg. Like we, I I want to you to know that how appreciative I am that you actually st- said something about this before it got to a point where you just like left an anger review and dumped us. You know what I mean? Cause that way we have a chance to fix it. We have the opportunity to do so. And I like love to hear people say that, although it's a pain in the butt trying to put out that fire, but I'd much rather have them email and say, Hey, your guy did this rather than just, you know, stop service for nobody knows why. But how many times did we see in the past that people just bottled stuff up because yeah. Because we weren't, you know, asking them how service was. Mm -hmm. They just bottled up and they said, you know, I've been putting up with this for so many months now, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, you know, we're really sorry about that, but we've never heard anything before. Yeah. We've never heard anything from you or any other pool that this technician takes care of. In order for us to be the best business and owners we can be, we rely on our customers to give us some kind of feedback. And that's where that constant follow up, you know, on things that we do is really important. So we can actually see where we're at because they get reminded because they're busy too, where it's nice to, you know, hit them with a, Hey, just wanted to see how things are going. Um, you know, is there any, anything you need help with? And they can say maybe at that point in time that, um, yeah, you know, your guy comes here and he, you know, sleeps on my lounge chair for 20 minutes and then he, takes off yeah throw oh. some tabs in and leaves yeah that's interesting <laughs> we'll take care of that you know what i mean yeah i i actually think that it signals to them that you care when you ask yeah. about their experience because you're opening the door of course to hear great feedback but more importantly to hear how you can improve mm. and you know ty and greg as business owners like that is worth gold mm-hmm. because you're constantly striving to be the best business you can be so if there's you know, employees that are falling short or practices that aren't working, like you're going to adapt and change those to become better. So I, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. I mean, Greg said it before, like maybe, maybe you're going through some stuff as business owners and right at that moment, you're not a five-star company and you know, and that gives you the opportunity to be like, okay, well, let me reassess. Like maybe we're doing something wrong or we're not doing something the best way we could do it. You know, it's maybe at that point in time, you're being a four star company. You have employees that are being four star people like you need to make some changes, make some updates. And that gives you, you know, if you're a good business owner, that gives you the opportunity to learn and grow. And I think that's what every entrepreneur, you know, needs to strive to do. Thank you guys so much for listening so far. I just want to mention a few things before we jump right back into it with Kim. First, I want to talk about the Reflections episode. If you have not checked it out yet, please do so. You can check out the podcast or it's also on our Instagram TV. Basically, it tells you how to get some Pool Chasers swag, merchandise. So please go to the website, poolchasers.com, fill out the form, give us a donation if you like. Then we'll uh, ship you out the product. And once you get it, if you could share it on social media, we will reshare it. You can see your 
posts on the Pool Chasers Instagram as well. So a big thank you to everybody who's done it already. We value that information and appreciate you. The second thing I want to mention is we have created a Facebook group. You can go to Pool Chasers Facebook to join that. Um, just want to touch base on it real quick. We are going to keep it kind of tight knit because we want it to be positive. We don't want it to be somewhere where people come in and bash each other. We know we all have to learn somewhere. So it's going to be a place for the community to be positive, share information. We want it to be a place where people can get lifted up and learn from, you know, we all had to start somewhere. We all have to learn and grow together. So let's do that. Keep it positive. And, you know, if you guys want to are interested in joining the group, please do so. And we're excited to see where that goes with you guys. So thank you so much and we will jump right back into it after word from our sponsor what's going on everybody this episode is brought to you by jobber jobber is by far our favorite tool for collecting deposits payments scheduling customer jobs and assigning tasks to a specific person on our team if you're looking for a better way to stay organized this is it i don't even know how we did things before jobber if you have any questions their customer service team is out of this world jobber is so cool that they are hooking up all of our listeners with a free 14-day trial just visit getjobber.com backslash pool chasers. That's getjobber.com backslash pool chasers. Try it out. We promise you won't be disappointed. All right. So talking with, about all the feedback, I mean, what should a business owner do with positive and negative views? Do you think? Yeah. Great question. As we mentioned, the reality is if you own a small business, you're going to get some negative feedback. I mean, none of us are perfect. Like Greg mentioned, we're human. There's going to be things that go wrong. Um, obviously, the unfortunate part um, with that is just that consumers trust these reviews so much. So if you're constantly getting negative feedback online, that's pretty rough because it is going to, you know, obviously affect your credibility and how people perceive you. But what I would say is, you know, you do have a chance through Google, Yelp, Facebook to respond to these reviews. So when you do get a negative review, my feedback to my business owners is always to try to, you know, acknowledge their feelings, but take the conversation offline. I mean, the last thing you want is to get in like a war on Yelp. And so you definitely want to acknowledge like, Hey, Mrs. Smith, I'm so sorry you had this experience. Here's my cell phone. Please call me and we will make this right. So you're encouraging them to take the conversation offline, but other consumers that happen upon that, that review, they'll see that you took the time to like make the, you know, remedy the situation or make the situation right. And that instantly builds credibility. And so my piece of advice to the listeners is if you do get negative feedback on any of those platforms, like respond. Take a moment to respond, but always encourage that and, you know, that conversation offline. And with positive reviews, I would also say respond. You know, your customer took however long, a minute to five minutes out of their day to leave you this feedback. Thank them for doing it. You know, you can you can access your reviews um, on Yelp and on Google through your back end portals, through those platforms. Um Again, if you don't know how to do that, hit me up. I'll, <laughs> I'll help you with that. But that's where it allows you to respond to these reviews. And, you know, even if you get a good one, thank you so much, Mrs. Smith, for this feedback. It means the world to us. We really enjoy having you as a client. Like that means a lot. And, and other people like reading stuff like that. So I would say definitely an engagement level with positive and negative reviews online. But more importantly is how are we going to get that content online? You know, and that's really where the broadly solution is, is how can we leverage technology to follow up with every single customer get great word of mouth on the platforms where we know other people are looking for it. And then, you know, hopefully potentially keep that negative feedback offline and encourage those private conversations. And so that's really what broadly is all about. Awesome. I was going to touch on something else too, that when we had Sophie on from Yelp, I think she brought up a really good point that we started implementing more was being a lot more personal with the response to the feedback. So not such a template, um, response. And, you know, I was doing that quite a bit before. I mean, I was, you know, changing um, a few things, but it was really kind of being more direct to them and talking about. So if they were talking about one of our guys in particular, we would talk about how thankful we are for that person and, you know, about the job and, you know, just some other personal things that might just, you know, you're now thinking about them. They took the time to make the review, but now you're 
kind of talking to to new people that stumble on your Yelp page or your Google reviews and things like that. So it's just super important to make it as personal as possible. And I think a lot of people need to know that that's what separates a lot of companies because I know there's times where it's like, man, I feel like I'm spending way too much time on this, but the ROI is great. You know what I mean? The people that spend the time doing all those little things and paying close attention to, you know, your Yelp profile and your Google profile, the ones that really take time to, um, to make sure that that's running correctly, I think they have a much, you know, greater ROI on being on those platforms. So all of that is just, you know, really, really important. And I know back to the positive and negative feedback, I really liked when we, we give you guys, uh, and we'll talk more about how this works, but we give you guys a ton of emails in the beginning to kind of go after um, just kind of how we were doing with our current customer base for the service. And it was really cool to kind of how you guys sent that data through email and it just broke everything down. It was real simple, real clean. And it just showed us, you know, who was doing what this person needed to be followed up with because there's now, now that we're talking about it, there was quite a few, um, a few years ago when we did that initial push, they were like, yeah, I need somebody to call me right away, blah, 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 blah. And it was like, Oh geez, you know what I mean? But it was really cool to kind of just get that. And it was pretty, I don't know. I thought it was pretty simple on our part that we could just see that and be like, Oh, you know, and I don't know who we were talking to at the time, but it was like, see, <laughs> that could have resulted in a negative Google review or Yelp review or something like that. Absolutely, but you yeah. got to kind of nip it, you know, right there instead of, uh, having to deal with it on one of these platforms, because a scary thing about Yelp and Google is that when somebody makes a negative review or something, they very well could just be make the review and knock it back on that platform for a very long time. Cause a lot of people have those notifications turned off. So you could, you know, you're just taking days to figure out how to respond to this and then you do it. And then it's like, hello, anybody there? <laughs> like totally. what the heck? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so you really got to take a deep breath and it's super difficult. You know, thank God that I have Tyler to, you know, help me through some of that. Cause sometimes it's like, dude, you just want to rip some of these people on new one, but you have to kind of grin and bear it. You have to stick up. You have to stick up for yourself to a certain extent, but you, there's a lot of, you know, grin and bear it. You I have to really self -control. talk control. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we talk about it a lot. I think the hardest ones are the ones that we know we went above, above and, beyond and beyond for. And they just, and those are the ones it. I think you have to take as a grain of salt, you know, like there are just going to be disgruntled people, but if you can leverage a tool that allows you to keep some of that stuff offline, like that's way better than obviously it's still having the potential to influence someone, you know, as a result of them reading it. So what you're saying is there's some people that are just crazy. Absolutely. Heck yeah. <laughs> we had somebody some months ago say they were going to call the cops on us oh, yeah. <laughs> because their cleaner was broke and they asked us to fix it and, and we, we took, took it out. It. Can you call the cops on us? <laughs> you kidding me? This crusty old, what are we going to do with this broken old Navigator. A cleaner? What are we going to do with this thing? You know what I mean? But it was just crazy. So thank God that didn't get on Yelp. That could have been, that could have been ugly. You know what I mean? I call that cops because you stole my cleaner. <laughs> These guys are on live PD. Live PD. Yeah. Don't want any of that. So how have you been kind of teaching small business owners to really track the results on some of these different platforms? I don't know. Do you guys even do you have something like that or are you kind of teaching them to go on each one of these sites individually? Yeah. Well, when we, you know, I, I guess that's a two part question. Obviously, if it's someone that partners with broadly, like we do, we take care of a lot of that. Like you get a designated customer success rep. And so if it's a business that hasn't claimed any of those pages or done any of that, doesn't know how to access those insights, like we'll we'll tell them how to do that, coach them through it, help them claim that page, give them all the logins to how they access that insight. And so that's one, like we help you with that. Um, but a lot of it are these workshops that I do or these talks along the way. Like some of them go into the details of like how you access your Google page. You literally go and press Google My Business, use your Google login, and that's where you have, you know, access to all those insights to read and respond to reviews, you know, add photos, all of that. Um, and with the Yelp stuff, it's as simple as going um, to biz.yelp.com 
com, I believe. Yeah. Is that right? And you use your login information there and that's where you can access all that information. And so some of it is just using workshops like we've done in the past at trade shows or, or different things to just try to bring some of that knowledge. But when you partner with Broadly, like we really take you through a tutorial on all of that and help you get started. Yeah. Are you finding that people aren't consistent with their information across all those platforms? Because there's some businesses that I see their website to, I mean, across the board and everything just seems so off where it's like, man, I feel like it's like a different business over here. Like their totally. color scheme is yep. different. It's because um, the 14 year old kid is running, yeah. running the Facebook or well, whoever's <laughs> doing, you know, the website needs to be doing all of it. You know what I mean? But I think that's super important is making sure that all that information across the board is, you know, all correct and it looks the same, not having a different mission statement on every single yeah. You know, yeah. Different platform. It's so funny. You guys know Tiff, um, my colleague, but it's really fun when we work, you know, the different shows and I'll overhear her like looking at someone's website and she's like, look, I like, I just want to give you a couple pieces of advice. Like, take this out, move this over, <laughs> put a picture of your team here because, you know, like we know what works. Like we know like how a website should look, what's inviting. And so we do look for opportunities to just share our knowledge. You know, the English eye le reads left to right. Like your, your website should be very easy to navigate. You know, people will have like things on the side and all the way at the bottom. It's like, no, like Almost like keep it simple, stupid, you oh, know, yeah. like, so we definitely look for opportunities to obviously not put companies down, but just, you know, give them knowledge of what we know and what works and, um, what Google's looking for. I mean, something as simple as being able to add content to your website all the time. Like who has the time to do that? But when you partner with Broadly and you can get that review stream and so you're constantly getting new content on those pages, like you immediately get an SEO boost as well. And so we want to give access to all of our secrets to anybody, you know. Yeah, Tiffany's awesome. She, she is, is. She's straight up blunt when she she's. Is. This is all really good. Is there a way we can just delete everything? Yeah, can, can we, we scrap this and ju <laughs> <laughs> just? Kidding. I think it would look really good. Just Wait, a white the, page, nothing. Give me the phone number to who did your website. Let me talk to them. No, she's amazing. And by the end, they're like, "Yes, I'll buy a Broadly website." And where do I sign? She's the best. Well, I mean, that's the best part. I mean, not everybody has somebody like myself that can run the majority of that. Because I can't really, even as much as I know, I couldn't imagine going into it brand new. Totally. Like managing the website and managing all that stuff. Like it would just be insane. And I mean, there's still a ton of stuff that we have to fix now. And it's just, it's, we've accepted that it's just kind of a never ending thing. As long as we're in business, we're constantly having to, you know, change things and change wording. Well, because, I remember, man, I remember in the beginning when you weren't here, it was like me trying to clean pools and then try to create a website and try to get pictures for that website, try to get somebody to do the designs, try to get somebody to do the wording. I had to write all the verbiage myself, write it all down, like reread it 400 times, get somebody else to reread it. Like it's a <laughs> lot of pain. It's a pain in the butt to even start a website. Yeah, so yeah definitely. There's a lot of, it's, it's cool when you have someone to help you out for sure. Yeah. And Google dings you too. If you don't spell words correctly or use phrasing incorrectly, um, cause they're actually, they're, their algorithm is so smart. They'll actually compare your information to other platforms and they can actually see that that's not really your phone number, you know, cause you, you started like a, um, when you claim your business on Google and the number you have on their little information to see reviews and things like that, if that's not mirroring up to what you're putting on your website, you won't get a notification on that stuff, but it is hurting you and it'll yeah, do. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's actually called NAP. So it's name, address, phone number. So all of those things need to match across all the platforms. And just doing that right gives you SEO credit. So, yeah, I mean, something as simple as that. But if I'm a like customer, that would, yeah, that would scare me. I'm yeah. like, I don't know if I want them in my backyard. They can't. They don't even know their own phone number. They don't even know their own address, <laughs> which we're not going to talk about our mailers that went out. <laughs> Were the because I know you're thinking it's all right. Fine, fine. Rough, you know what? We're rough. just gonna throw it out there. Let me talk about mistakes real quick. Oh, so, yeah. did we talk about this before? No, we have not. All right, we'll just throw it out there because you know everybody makes mistakes, <laughs> but Greg's, this happened to be a very biggest expensive mistake. one. Yeah, Greg's biggest mistake in brother's history. Wait, when was this? <laughs> this was the beginning. It's very okay. big, yeah, I mean, yeah, probably eight months into it. Okay. I would guess. Yeah, and we didn't have very much money. 
Yeah, we had like no money. I'm not <laughs> yeah. even sure where this And Greg blew it all on a mailer. <laughs> that was wrong. Yeah, so yes. the whole point of the mailer, I mean, it looked awesome. You know, we paid to have these mailers made up, had to pay the graphic designer to do uh, the graphic design for it. We had to get did these. Did a photo shoot just yeah. for that. Yeah, we did a photo shoot just for that. We did a uh, kind of... We worked with this company. I don't even remember who they were, but they kind of strategically, you know, got the demographic of our area and they gave us all the addresses of, you know, people that have pools and things like that. So all that. buy that. Yeah, (laughs) dude, it was super expensive and it cost more for this company to actually send the address or send the mailers to all those addresses. Um, So these all got sent out and then like, uh, I don't know, weeks, a month went by and didn't hear anything about it. We're like, what the hell is going on? Are you kidding me? All that money and nobody's nothing? Um, And then finally, I think somebody called. No, I went to a a bid and the guy was like, hey, you know, the number on here is wrong. Like it calls American Express or something. Was it American Express? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Or Or Discovery. Discovery, bank card. And like, you know, this number goes to to American Express. (laughs) There was like one, there was like one number off or something like that in the phone number. Yeah. So. I think it was four, four or yeah. I don't remember. Four, three, eight, seven. Instead of five, three, eight, seven. But it was just, I mean, that, that seriously (laughs) crushed me, crushed my spirits for like a super long time. Like, I mean, to this day, I'm still like. Somebody's like, oh, what's your phone number? Or typing it. Like, I, I'm i like, four, eight, <laughs> zero, four, four, eight? Is that right? Mm-hmm. Hold on. Let me yeah. look. Let me. You're like, single check, double check, triple check. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. I mean, I think about it every time oh that we gosh. have to give our phone number That's out. That's crazy. But that, was, that was a huge upset. But um, still hang, I still have it hanging on my wall in my home office. Uh, I hate mailers. it. That's why I never go to Tyler's house. It will ever. never die. It will never, the memory will live on. It's still on. there. Because we had boxes. We still have just boxes. <laughs> <laughs> like I mean, yeah, we had extras, and it was like just recently, some months ago, we're finding like, are we ready to throw these out? Yeah, and I was like, yeah. I was gonna say we could go for a bonfire tonight. Yeah, if you saw that. <laughs> right? yeah it was a I actually would have like been a, more fun. like a oh, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollar loss, <laughs> nothing. Thanks yeah. a lot, Greg. <laughs> yeah, freaking idiot. It was rough. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I remember stuff that. stuff happens, and it's kind of funny now. Because we wouldn't do something like that now as far as sending no. out the mailers. No. You know? But it was a way to that initial exposure in our city because at that point in time, we had no website traction really. Didn't really have a lot of... We didn't have a presence on any, you know, kind of social platforms and things like that. So that was going to be our big push. And uh, yeah, we're still yeah, waiting for still, that check still from the American <laughs> Express. So Dude, we probably got dude, them so much I was gonna say... <laughs> So how was the ROI on that? Yeah. <laughs> Not very good. We They're like, but American Express yeah. killed it. Killed. Yeah. <laughs> like, we, can you guys send them our way if you get when you get done with their credit card? So now that I got you on the phone, would you like to pay your bill? Yeah. Oh, sh- um, I, is this the brothers? No, but do you need a credit card? Those damn brothers. They're just going to give a negative review. I tried calling you guys for pool service and I ended up having to pay off my credit card. Right. Oh, we're so sorry. <laughs> Shoot. Oh my gosh. Crazy. I mean, the website was still right. You still probably got some exposure from it, but yeah, it kind of sucked. Thank you, Ty. <laughs> so let's jump into a whole nother beast here called Facebook. You want to share with us what you know about Facebook? Yeah. Well, let me ask you guys, like, do you, I mean, as business owners, because this is always really interesting to me, you know, Facebook started as just such a personal, you know, like, oh, you had a Facebook account, your friends and family, you could see your pictures. Like, I'd love to hear from your point of view as business owners, how do you feel like Facebook or do you feel like Facebook has changed in terms of a social platform, like how you use it as a business platform? Yeah, I think Facebook is awesome, and I don't really think that we utilize it the best that we possibly could. Um, You know, everybody's got excuses, and we have ours, which is always time. And we've kind of found, especially doing Pool Chasers and Brothers, since we were on Instagram so early, um, the ROI has been better on that platform. But Facebook is huge. We've been on it since the beginning. Uh, The reviews are just as important. Um and there's just there's a lot of benefits to it as far as like the video exposure and there's an insane amount of people on there. Right. Um, but it's really good. If you I just look think at our it's Facebook inter- reviews. I don't think we know how to drive. Oh yeah, <laughs> there's another failure from Greg. <laughs> Do we have a review? Somebody 
saying that I cut them off and then I just <laughs> stared at them in the mirror and I'm laughing or something. Yeah. Sounds accurate. Yeah. Just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's, we, we've had two on Facebook that were about driving. I think the other one got taken down. But. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. But sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No. Well, okay. I actually think you touched on what's key um, for Facebook for businesses because, you know, it all – started obviously as this social platform. But the reality is that there's 76% of Facebook users that log into that platform every day. And so just the pure traffic and volume of people that are on that platform, what was once obviously just for, you know, social is now almost, you know, necessary for business. And um, this stat is really sad to me, but there's over 300 feet like of news feed that's scrolled through daily by one user. Mm-hmm. And that is like the Statue of Liberty. I mean, that's like <laughs> scary just how much time we're spending on these platforms. And so where where I think Facebook differs from the Google platform and Yelp platform in terms of how it works and why it's important to have reviews and a high star rating there is obviously you guys have seen on Facebook when someone from your network says like, hey, anybody have a recommendation for a good plumber? So what happens is when then people from your network start to put their recommendations in the comment section, if it's a business that has a Facebook page that Facebook recognizes, it pulls in their entire page with their star rating. So let's say someone puts on there, hey, anybody know a if really they good tag it, right? No, even if they just type in the name of the business, Mm -hmm. Facebook will pull in the business page. And so if someone says, hey, looking for a good pool company in Scottsdale and someone pulls in Brothers Pool, it will pull in what your star rating is. And then, you know, like then it's a direct click onto your Facebook page. Mm -hmm. So if that good old word of mouth referral isn't matching up to a great reputation on Facebook, there's a disconnect. Oh, well, someone's telling me brothers, but they have two stars on, I'm not saying you have two stars. (laughs) Can you you use another another company? (laughs) No, I'm sure you look great on Facebook. I'm just using name recognition, but you know, you want your reputation on Facebook to match that word of mouth referral that people are recommending to, you know, their network of people on Facebook. And so that's where it's like, you do want to have a push to try to get this content on Facebook because there's just so much daily activity and what was once, you know, um, for college students, you know, now is for small businesses everywhere. And I think it's important to have ownership on that page as well. Yeah, I think Facebook is a little um, intimidating because it's really a one stop shop because it almost works as like a website. You can put pricing on there, hours. You can message them about certain topics. You That's can come right. up with template responses. You can even and post what applications I saw you did recently, right? When you're hiring, you, you can even yeah, post applications yeah. on there. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So if you're hiring for a tech or a manager or another uh, business owner or something, yeah. <laughs> uh, you, can, <laughs> you can always go on there and do that. But that's what makes it a little bit more intimidating is because Facebook is so vast that they can they have the team to make these changes. And since they're able to keep up with the times, they can just make all these changes because Facebook is definitely that platform where you could be off of it for a month and go back on there. And so many things have changed. You're like, dude, where do I even freaking start? Layout like all the time. Yeah. So I definitely think it's worth doing that. And another cool feature is that you can schedule posts on there. So, you know, Facebook being a one-stop shop definitely has like its own sort of internal SEO because so many people are on there and that, like Google has its own special kind of algorithm. So when people are talking about your business and things like that, it's really picking up keywords and things like that. Um, you can tag different posts and things like that. So it's almost like tagging on your website That's for right. SEO. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's super important. It's just like anything else. If you're going to be a part of it and you need it to work, you have to be consistent with it. And I just recently listened to a really cool um, podcast episode. Um, it was on a 
on a contracting podcast and they talked about um, this one company specifically that has um, really good traction on Facebook and it was about being consistent and it's Facebook is different. You can't just go on there and think that you just did this phenomenal video you spent 10 grand on and just think it's going to get this automatic hit and it's going to be trending like you have to give it time and you have to make a name for yourself and that's being on there and figuring out and learning things and making sure that you know certain customers of yours are being sent a request so that they can follow your page. Um, so even in advertising, you know, it's really kind of focusing on your key demographic and really figuring it out or talking to people that know what they're talking about so that you can really get, you know, your ROI. And I thought it was really cool. This was really interesting look on it because I never really thought about it like this. And it's pretty basic is that so this company in particular, they build, you know, bathrooms and they do remodels and different things like that. And he was saying that he puts so much money towards this stuff and he has it dialed in. But he's like, a ton of stuff doesn't come through. But when something does, like it will have paid for sure. every advertising that they've done. I mean, not even on Facebook, but other things because of the type of jobs that they're going after. So they were talking about it for other companies where it's like, you know, use that specific thing that you want to advertise that, you know, is making your business a certain amount of money that you feel comfortable with and advertise that and really measure that ROA that way. So it's if you get one a month, but you're making so much money on that job, it will have paid for that and all other um, advertising that you might have done on Facebook for that year. So I think it's really important to, you know, really open your mind up and think outside of the box in terms of like advertising. And that's really kind of, I think, a push that we want to make for Facebook is really just kind of being on it every day and really exploring every kind of in and out of Facebook because there's a ton of people on there and there's a lot of stuff going on, but still, I think, a very useful platform. I mean, if you listen to other entrepreneur podcasts and everything, Facebook advertising is one of the most underpriced you know, areas for the amount of reach that you get. Well, that's the crazy thing is that you can drill down so specifically the demographic that you want. And that is so powerful. I mean, if you're like Ty, you were telling me, man, we'd love to go up into some more of those homes. I mean, you can target zip codes, you can target, you know, household income. It's like, you can get so specific with who you're trying to get eyes on, your content that it, it, I would agree with you so much. Yeah, there. it's super underpriced. I mean, people compare it to, you know, Google clicks in the beginning where now it's, you know, if it was once four cents a click. Now it's $10 a click yeah. you know, where now you can get in front of a thousand people for four or five, ten dollars And, you know, a couple of years, it'll be 40, $50. Right. So, but so. I also think that you really have to do your research for sure. Um, because you need to compare and I'll give this tip out there that you need to compare the Google analytics because on your Google analytics, you're going to see what the age demographic of people visiting your site. You're going to see the majority gender. You're going to see the zip code. You're going to see all these different, um, behaviors that they have. And those are the kind of things that you want to take that data and go into Facebook when you're trying to when you're trying to target market your audience. You're being like, OK, I'm looking for a female, you know, 35 to 45. They need to be in this zip code. Um, they're into real estate. They're into this. They're into that. So because that data on the analytics side is really what you want, because that is real data from people that are actually visiting your site, that are actually looking for your services and I think you'd be really surprised on what you think you know about your customers that you really don't. You're like, really? They're all like super into Looney Tunes. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, it's actually kind of crazy. Like yeah, the you information you can get it. from that. It's, it's insane. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to huck that out there. I mean, as far as like the pool service side of it, I think that that is pretty valuable to do your research. Don't ever stop doing your research. Mm-hmm. I think that is like unlimited and all the resources we have this day and age with, you know, the good old internet. It all in or not? You don't have to go to the library anymore. And <laughs> <laughs> so, Kim, with all of that being said, you know, what is the best way for um, small business owners and, you know, pool service and repair owners and builders and things like that? What's the best way for them to really, you know, keep in contact with their with their customers? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, we sort of believe at broadly, like we mentioned earlier, that, you know, it's just best business practice now to be able to ask your customers, you know, how'd you do or what was the experience? And so obviously there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. 
um, you know, you can ask in person. Maybe once you finish the job, if it's a repair job or a service job, you can just say like, hey, are we doing a good job for you? Um, you know, there's plus sides to that and there's downsides. You know, one is do you feel like they're going to give you honest feedback? Sometimes that can be a little awkward when you're face to face and they don't necessarily feel, feel comfortable. Like if they're having an issue to be able to, you know, verbalize it right then and there. So you run the risk of not getting, you know, actual honest, feedback. honest feedback. Um, you know, another downside is if they do give you great feedback, like, Oh my gosh, you guys are the best. Like, I really, really love you. You know, there's no one else there to hear that feedback. It literally evaporates into midair. And so you've lost the chance to then, you know, get that anywhere else where anybody can hear it. Um, you know, but the reality is when you do ask, it signals to them that you care, like we talked about before, which is important. And so I would definitely say, you know, if you're not doing anything other than asking in person, keep doing that. Um, it's important. It's just there, you know, you have to kind of weigh the options of, you know, the downsides of that. Another option is, you know, sending some sort of follow-up tool. Maybe you send an email just saying like, Hey, would love any feedback that you had. Please let us know if we did a good job for you. Sometimes, you know, you may even send a survey or a postcard out. A lot of small businesses have tried that. Um, what we've learned about that is like, that's a really big ask. You know, most people are not going to take the time to fill out a 10 question questionnaire about your services. It's just something that's kind of lost its um And, you know, there's a really low engagement rate with stuff like that. So, you know, we sort of really ask ourselves, you know, how can you, you know, leverage a tool to be able to reach out to every single customer you service, no one falls through the cracks, and you're able to say thanks for choosing us and how'd we do for you. And so that really is what Broadly is all about sort of just introducing it is we're an automated follow-up tool that allows you to keep a tight pulse on your business and leverage technology to get great feedback on Google, Yelp, and Facebook. So what that looks like is we brand a follow-up tool that can live in the form of an email or a text message. It looks like it's coming from your business. It has your branding there. And like we said, it's a thank you. It says, thank you so much for choosing us. And it asks the million dollar question, which is, would you recommend our business to a friend? Yes or no. So again, it does doesn't really get busy with like an NPS score or a one through 10. You really just want to keep it simple for your customers. So what's really special about Broadly's technology is when they get this follow-up, whether it lives on their smartphone or their laptop at home or a tablet, Broadly's technology can read where your customer is logged in. And so we're taking the guesswork out of where are they most likely going to leave you a review. Again, if they have to jump through a lot of hoops to leave you this content, even if they love you, they probably won't do it. So you've got to keep it simple. So if they press yes, I would recommend, and they're logged into Google, we take them right to your Google box. And with one click of a button, you would have a new Google review. So it's really kind of what we call one click technology. Um, the three platforms that we're really reading for a login there are Google, Yelp, and Facebook. And we just believe that those are the most important sites to show up on and have content. Um, if they press no, the reason we ask that yes or no is because there's going to be times like we talked about that people are disgruntled. And so when they press no, they're taken to a page again, that's your branding as the business. And it just says, Hey, we're really sorry. You know, let us know your feedback. So as soon as they press send feedback, then you, the business owner, or, you know, if there's multiple business owners are alerted live time with an email that says, you know, so-and-so would not recommend and here's why. So now you have, you know, that valuable information like we talked about, but it's happening in a private channel. And so it gives you the ability to be able to reach out, you know, and, and remedy the situation, apologize, make it right, clear up, you know, any discrepancies and what that means, or at least, you know, what I know my customers have experienced is, um, you know, keeping a customer happy, which is dollars in the business. Cause like Ty said, you know, they're not going to walk. It's keeping them referring friends and family, which is more dollars in the business. And so really we're giving you a tool that allows you to sort of take ownership of ways to improve, but be able to keep it offline. 
Um, so that's sort of the, the the program in a whole. You really just have to think about it as just this automated tool to really grow your word of mouth. Um, another really neat feature of the technology is um, what we call the broadly review stream. So um, on your website, we basically give you a a stream that allows every new review that you get to stream live to your website. And we um, do it in a way where it is actually embedded and it's organic content. And so there's a huge SEO value there. As you guys know, anytime you can add new content to the website, that's a big SEO boost, but it's actually readable content. So Google can read every single word that lives in the review. So with Broadly, you know, not only are you getting the word of mouth, but you're also getting, you know, the SEO boost as well, which is kind of what we like to call Double dipping. <laughs> that's a huge yep. that's a huge part that people understand about your guys' services for sure. Yeah. So what I thought would be cool is just I, I mean, you guys were really early adopters of the program and obviously broadly has changed and evolved adding new things, but I'd love to just have your listeners be able to hear what your experience was with the technology and you know how it changed things for you or, or what your guys' first hand experience was. Yeah, I think going off of what you just said, I think two crazy awesome features besides the huge SEO benefits to having all those reviews on an actual tab on your website is, one, you don't have to have any negative reviews on there. So it's all positive, you know what I mean? And you guys are grouping all those different platforms together and just building one solid tab of just review after review, which is really cool. The other thing is, and I kind of forgot about it until now, is that people can kind of make a make an internal broadly review so they can actually give some kind of feedback, not on any platform, but they can just kind of say this snippet of, you know, kind words and that actually gets hosted as a review, but it's like a broadly review. So that's just another kind of piece that goes along with that that can sit on that um, website. Yeah, you're saying if they don't go through the steps to like go yeah. onto the actual social platform. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, that's a big reason why we wanted you here is because broadly had a huge impact on our business and we want to give everybody, you know, everybody that listens to the pool chasers podcast to have, you know, all the tool, all the tools that we had when we first were coming up. And this was uh, a really good investment for us. Um, but we have ran into some people and just kind of throw this out there that I think maybe use broadly, but they weren't using it correctly. And that's, you know, really understanding your business, your business model and, you know, using it to, to work for your business. And, you know, one way that we used was we would have customers, you know, be kind of weekly service customers. The repairs could get, you know, uh, an email right away where you would submit that email to you guys so that you guys could, you know, follow up with them to see, you know, if we did a good job or not. And those usually, you know, led to some positive feedback or things we needed to fix. But for the weekly, ongoing weekly pool service, we actually had a system which was really cool where we would actually use what was, we don't use Basecamp too much anymore, but we actually had it in one folder and it would sit. And after a certain time, like after two months went by, we would go back to it and we would move it to another folder. And it was a reminder to send the email to you guys. And that was just because they needed to be with us for so long. And at that point in time, we could actually say, hey, how's everything going? You've been a right. customer for you know so long now. How's everything going? Is there anything that we need to fix? And they'd be like, no, everything is fantastic, blah, blah, blah. And you know, they would have that option of giving us some feedback. And uh, once we kind of shifted things to, to kind of uh, using that process, things started to work out much better. Um, but you know, straight out of the chute, submitting all those different emails for repairs and customers we had for a long time, they had tons of good things to say about us and it just, it was huge, but, um, yeah, we love it. And just hosting those reviews has a huge, um, has a huge, um, ROI for us because I can actually see how much time through the Google analytics, how much time people are spending on the reviews tab on the website and they're spending, you know, you know, four or five minutes just looking at that going, staring at all those reviews. And there's a ton of reviews on there, um, between, you know, the Facebook, Yelp, Google, yeah, that that was really important for you guys to figure out early on. And actually, that really helped like your feedback really helped broadly, because obviously broadly works in a lot of different industries where reviews matter, home services, medical, dental, I was telling you guys earlier, pet services. But, you know, every industry is different in terms of like, hey, when should that thank you follow up go out? And so like you said, with repairs, it's like you want to 
to go out right away. It's fresh on their mind. You did the repair. How'd I do? But with service, it's not like you're going to say like, hey, thank you. Would you recommend us to a friend when you've cleaned their pool one time? You know, especially if it's a crazy job that's going to take a few times to get it where it needs to be. And so a lot of it took some figuring out on our end on, you know, on this specific industry for pools, like what is that great time cadence? And you guys actually, you know, were really instrumental in us creating like what that cadence should be. And so now we've come up with strategies depending on what, you know, different software, um, you know, softwares that companies are using um, to figure out what that trigger is. You know, maybe it's after five services or it's two months in, you know, whatever that business owner thinks is a good time, then we adopt that into sort of how to get that thank you email out. But I think that's a really important part of understanding how well this technology is going to work to get you the feedback and the valid feedback that you're looking for. So, and with that said, I'll just mention, you know, a couple really new exciting things is, um, you know, when we can build an integration to a software where we're able to automate the data collection. In other words, getting your customer's information, whether that's their email address or phone number to send the thank you email out. When we have an integration, it becomes that much more easy because that's one less thing for you as the business owner to do. So we just recently launched an integration with Jobber, which I know, um, you know, is a big sponsor for you guys and a lot of your listeners. Jobber. Yeah. What up, Jobber? (laughs) Um, And so that's great. So now we can build those triggers in to know when to send that thank you email out and have it be automated. You know, we also have a QuickBooks integration. So we're looking for ways to obviously streamline this. Obviously, if it's not, you know, one of those softwares, you don't use those like broadly can still work for you. We have an app, we have tools that make it very easy for you to get us your customer information. But building those integrations out are pretty exciting. So what other are you integrated with what other types of, I know you were talking about earlier, some different service. Yeah. Like service with. Titan, service monster. Um, you know, jobber, like I said, is one of the more recent ones, you know, in other industries, we have several in like the dental marketplace and the medical marketplace. So, um, we're constantly looking sort of which CRMs and which systems are going to be most advantageous, um, for us to build those integrations. And sometimes it depends on their technology, what APIs and webhooks they have mm-hmm. that make it easy for us to kind of plug and play there. Um, but if you guys, you know, obviously you're a trusted QuickBooks source, online is probably a big one. For it's huge because that's industry. obviously across lots of industries as yeah. well. So that was an early integration for mm-hmm. us. But um, yeah, I was excited when I heard that the Jobber one was released. So and it's just so nice that it saves you so much time because even if you were to try to do that after every single job and try and figure out how long they've been a service customer for and send those emails out and kind of do all of that. Like you have a business to run and it's just, it's just really difficult. And by, you know, having, you know, some type of service that can just help you figure out the kind of feedback you're getting just makes your job easier because the real work starts where they tell you, Hey man, you got to fix this. That's where you step in and you say, okay, I do apologize for this. You know, we'll make sure to get this corrected, you know, ASAP, whatever, whatever's going on, but you have a business to run. There's all these other things going on. There's so many variables that it's nice that when we have something that's a little bit more automated for us to just help us out and communicate with our customers the best that the best way that we can. And all of that is just really helping us get more new customers. Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, that's the goal, right? Like when you, when the phone rings and it's potential new business and you say, Hey, how'd you hear about brother's pool? And they're like, I read your reviews online. You guys are killing it. That's like, Oh, this matters. Or like when you're looking at your Google insights and you see how much time people are spending reading reviews, like that blows my mind, you know? And that's the part where it's like, you need those insights because it makes it that much more important. Cause the reality is if someone gets a good old fashioned word of mouth referral, the next place they're going after that is your website. They need to figure out your contact information. They probably want to see pictures of who you are, your story, and they want to read reviews. And I mean, just what you shared is, you know, such a testament to that. And I feel like even word of mouth is starting to fade away because I know me personally, I don't like giving too many recommendations word of mouth because I don't want to be responsible for whatever job that company does. You know what I mean? Where I give you a referral and it's like, dude, what the heck? You sent this like freaking nutcase over to my house and he freaking, you know, whatever happened, you know what I mean? Whereas, you know, like you talked about social proof, 
it's really nice that you can just kind of go online and it's like, you know, they're kind of responsible. The people that made all this feedback are kind of responsible for, you know, what's, what's going to happen. And that just mean like personally responsible, not uh, there to blame. Sure. Everybody has maybe a different experience than, you know, another time. But, um, yeah, I mean, I've said that several times. You probably heard me. I mean, that to me, you know, online reviews is basically word of mouth now and play on an online platform. Right. So, I mean, that's that's been my pitch for probably for a long time. You know, people say, oh, I just do I just do word of mouth. I'm like, no, that that is the new word of mouth. You know, yeah. it's an online platform. So or it's just not enough anymore. You know, that that idea of word of mouth, it's just not enough. It's too slow. So, like, I'll come across business owners that are like, I don't want to grow. And I'm like, you're not my customer. You know, like, you're not – like, the goal of Broadly is to take your business to the next level. And in this, I mean, that equals, you know, more pools in your route, more, you know, more – the phone ringing more. Like, just new business because this is where customers are looking for their next pool service. And it's really unfortunate. You can tell how many companies have gotten burned because I know that – we were getting sent companies to kind of just give our testimony on our experience with Broadly. And they would call me like, yeah, I just want to hear you guys actually use it. Or are they paying you? And I'm like, no, we actually use it. And uh, we would just talk through them and they would feel a lot more comfortable after the conversation. But you could just tell that, I mean, there's so many different companies. Once they find out that you've started a company, an LLC, or you do a Google listing and things like that where your information becomes public, right? Um, everybody's going to start hitting you, you get up. inundated, yeah. yeah. And just a friendly tip, just make a marketing <laughs> extension like Tyler did for our phone, and uh, we just ignore that all day long. So hopefully hopefully you're not trying to call that, that long. <laughs> yeah, don't press marketing. It just goes in a loop. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. Because it's, it's out of control, and you don't yeah. even know – what and who to believe these days when it comes to that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So it's Yeah, just- I actually love that you say that because part of, you know, what I mentioned earlier, like having the opportunity to just share insights and share information is to also kind of like say, you know, be weary of companies that are coming in and saying like, I can get you on page one tomorrow, like, and making promises that you know, are just unattainable. Like what I like to do with, you know, potential people partnering with Broadly is set realistic expectations, especially if you're a newer company starting out and you don't have a huge customer base yet. You know, you can only get that thank you email out to so many people. Like you definitely have to view this partnership as more of a marathon than a sprint. Like it's going to take time to build your online presence and th- and that's okay. Like you got to be okay with that. But if you continue to put effort at it, it will grow over time. And I mean, you guys saw that firsthand. It's like you started with this amount of pools and this amount of word of mouth. And as it grew, like your routes grew. And so that's obviously the goal of partnering with a company like Broadly. Yeah. I think if we were starting our business today, going into what we kind of know about the past and where you guys are at with Broadly now, I think what I would do would actually write down the things that I don't understand and the things that I actually need help with and the things I'm trying to get out of my business, which is more calls, um, you know, more leads through these different platforms, write all that stuff down and be like, okay, I'm comfortable with this. This is kind of, these are my goals and these are the things I don't understand and reach out to a company like you guys and be like, Hey, this is, this is what I got. These are the things I don't understand. I have a website. I don't think it's very good. It's not mobile friendly. I don't think I'm getting the traffic that I need. Um, my, my phone isn't, you know, really ringing like it used to blah, blah, blah. Um, and these are, these are the things I do know. And these are the things that I don't know what can you help me out with? Sure. You know absolutely. what I mean? So I think that was, you know, I just kind of thought of that, that if I were doing this, you know, this, this day and age where I just wasn't up to date with, you know, marketing these days, those are some things that probably do is just, you know, write a good old fashioned list of things that you know and don't know. That's a good idea. Yeah. Think- and you guys are creating a space to share information like that, you know, giving other people that are in your guys's industry a chance to learn about these things, which kudos to you. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, even from, I mean, what you're saying, we started in what you said, 2015 with Broadly. Yeah. I mean, so even, even like from what you're talking about, all the integrations now, what you, when you were saying earlier, Greg, about how we had separate folders to like 
move stuff along. Like, and then we sent them email lists every, every so often. Like even your integrations now with the app and stuff sound like it's way more advanced than even when we used it a couple oh, years ago. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and that's what's really I was cool. playing Oregon Trail when I was right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you died of typhoid fever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just totally aged ourselves yes. there, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> Damn, how old are you guys? <laughs> <laughs> no, right? Um, no, that that's what's really cool as an employee broadly. Like one of the things that I hold most dear is like I'm working for a company that doesn't stay static. Like we're constantly looking for ways to like be better, make our customers better, make it easier for them to do business with us. And that's what will come down the pipe with, you know, more extensive apps and, you know, better integrations. And, um, you know, just again, like we're doing a lot of really fun stuff with messaging right now through our broadly app, which we know is sort of the trend where things are going, you know, a lot of your listeners probably don't even have a system that houses all their customer information or any type of CRM or, you know, online system. And so through the Broadly app, you know, it houses all your customer information. You can message them through there. You get live reporting through there. So, um, you know, it's really, really neat. And (laughs) yeah, definitely. Um, we've, we've, uh, added a couple more things since 2015, (laughs) but that's why it's important. I think with any good marketing company you start to deal with is just ask all the questions so that you fully understand what you're getting yourself into. I mean, what contract am I looking at? What am I paying? These are the things I know. Everything you're talking about, I understand a quarter of it. Can you explain the rest of it to me? And just take baby steps with it. Like, take the time to really understand it. Absolutely. Yeah, do your research. I mean, you were talking about, um, you said to Sam on the Jobber episode, you know, we had Jobber for four months before we really started to use it because we didn't didn't understand and know if it was going to be something we could actually use. So you have to study it, work the system, you know, figure out if that's what you're going to do. Because you were saying earlier, Kim, that like, you know, that some people even some of your sales team sometimes doesn't understand the relationship and how it's going to work. And you, you might send sign somebody up that isn't really, you know, a broadly customer and it won't work that well. And so they have a bad taste in their mouth, but it wasn't really a good get go from the beginning. Sure. You know what I mean, so it's, yeah. you have to understand what works best for your business and do the research and figure out if this is actually something you want to use in any platform, right? You have to vet any company and figure out if this will actually work for your business and what the way you do things. Yeah. Vet it out a little bit. Um, And, you know, one thing I'll say to that is, you know, when you're thinking as a business owner, how you're going to allocate your marketing dollars, like we said, I mean, you guys get call after call, like pay for this, pay for this, do a door hanger that has the wrong phone number on it. I'm just saying. (laughs) Thank you. I needed that reminder. (laughs) The reality is, you know, paying for ad space online has changed a little bit because the consumer is more savvy today than they were. You know, before it was like, okay, on Yelp, I'm searching for, you know, this in this area. Oh, this came up first. So I'm going to call them. Right. Um, but this, the, the consumer kind of sees that green ad box and goes like, oh, well, that customer is actually paying to come up first, but yeah, yet like they, they don't actually right have a lot of reviews. Like, why would I choose them over, you know, this company is coming up first with no ad and they have way more reviews. So I always like to challenge my business owners, like think about like, if you're choosing to allocate those funds to advertising, are you really attracting the type of customer that you want? The one that's just going to choose the first person that came up without doing any other research or not really reading the reviews? No, like you want that consumer that sort of is a little bit more savvy. They know what they're looking for. And so, you know, I really think that those marketing dollars then should be allocated toward something like this word of mouth, you know, marketing where you're actually getting your best customers to leave you the content that you want on these, you know, pages and So, you know, sort of that idea of like advertising versus, you know, word of mouth marketing. I think you really need to think about that and what's the best fit for your business. For sure. Yeah. I think you sign up with Yelp because they call you. (laughs) Yeah. I think, (laughs) I think you have like some responsibility to really like pay attention because don't let some company like oversell you on something that you don't need. It doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense. Look at your business and look at what it's doing. Like you should have enough sense to know if I were using Yelp, if you were using Yelp to go, you know, find, you know, the best plumber or the best, you know, Mexican food or something like when you go on there, are you going to the one that's like most organically ranked or are you going to go to the, you know, 
the one that's like a sponsored ad and it's got like half a star or, exactly you know one that's exactly star. right yeah, one review like but you on the other end of that like that just seems very reckless and foolish to be like oh yeah well i'll throw you know this much money at it blah 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 we'll see what happens nothing is going to happen the right. people that come to you are <laughs> going to be like people that you don't want. That's what's going to happen. That's exactly right. But I think business owners get so fixated on like just being number one or getting new business. And so they get caught up in that and they just, you know, businesses make promises. And so it's very easy to fall into that trap. So, I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. Just take your time to, you know, research. And, you know, what's really cool for Broadly is obviously we're a review company. And so if you just Google Broadly, comma, Oakland, like you're going to see our Google listing come up and we have over 400 Google reviews. These are people that are using Broadly's platform and what their experience has been with it and, you know, how it's changed the landscape of their business. So that's our social proof. Like, Hey, this is a company that works. Like this is, you know, changed my business. I'm, I'm now getting Google reviews. I could never get one before. All right. So let's kind of wrap it up here. How can people get a hold of you, Kim, if they want to learn more about Broadly? Yeah, sure. So um, the best way to get in touch with me is my cell phone. And so that is 949 949- two seven four six seven one six um but you can shoot me an email at kim at broadly dot com um, but the other thing I want to put out there is just if you happen to come through the website or call the headquartered line, just make sure you mention um, pool chasers. And that way that will get filtered back to me and we can extend that preferred partner discounted pricing for your guys's listeners. Truly appreciate you being on here with us, Kim. You know, we respect your opinion on a lot of the review stuff. So that's why I wanted to have you on. So thanks so much for flying all the way here and joining us. Honestly, you guys, thanks for having me. This was a huge privilege. And like I said, huge amount of respect for the two of you and what you guys have built here. And I'm just happy to be a part of it. So thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thank you guys so much for listening. We truly appreciate you giving us your time and your ear. We know how important and valuable that is. So thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, you can reach us at poolchasers.info at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Our tag is poolchasers. If you guys could take a minute and go to Apple Podcasts to rate and review the podcast, we would truly appreciate it. See you out there, poolchasers. Pool chasers.